Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are watching in the world. Oh. <coughs> I've got the wrong one going and I don't want to end up getting feedback. Ignore the thing on the bottom. I got to get that ticker going off because that's the wrong one. And so we're, there we go. Um, ignore that was what a what a day, what a game, what a performance, what a an, I'm completely flabbergasted and I will definitely take it. I've pulled up some of the magic number stuff and so that we can end up talking about that as we go through things and hopefully I get that right and figure all that sort of stuff out. But it was an absolutely glorious Tuesday um, competitor for Cannon for goal of the match. I'll let you guys t- talk about that one, that the second goal there that M- Mullen ended up scoring that went all the way down. You've got uh, Barnett getting on the score sheet early in the 21st minute. Um, we'll talk about all of that and more here at the After 90 Minutes as we're joined um, over time with uh, the gang over the local pundit, um, whether that be Sheldon, who's uh, Sheldon's in Wrexham, so I don't anticipate that he will actually be joining us, but I believe that Josh is or Ivan. Or you can join in too and share your thoughts. It could be just me remembering that Matt from the Race Course Ramble joins us frequently, but he's at the game. Baz joins us frequently, but he was at the game. And so here I am just locking it down as we go through the chat, and you guys get to share your thoughts on what's happening and that's my take on it too it doesn't matter if stockport win or not it's just about us but that was a great day as we go through barnett mullen with two um i my notes are such chicken scratch that i'm gonna have a tough time uh figuring out exactly um who scored there you had the cannon with his off of the lee nick in the 76 minute and then me, if you weren't watching on the live party, putting the jinx out, I was playing an Algonquin goal celebration video to reward him for his efforts. And while I was playing it, uh, Crawley scores on that corner. So, yeah, he was doing a vlog, and so he's he's there and living living life open. Hi, Daniel. How are you? Pleasure to have you. For those of you who haven't been here before, um, wherever you are watching, we are streaming through multiple different providers. I didn't check. I see that we are on five, six, seven, eight, nine different locations. So, whether that's on Twitter, whether you're joining us on YouTube, whether you're joining us on Facebook, uh, feel free to have a comment. It'll all make it up over here and be uniformly connected. We're all connected to chat. You have the opportunity to chat with me where, wherever you are. Go down the description below and it will have a link. And that link will connect you with us. And I'm going to pull that link so that I've got it copy and pasted. And we will largely just talk about the game that was and what it means for us moving forward of trying to secure ourselves a spot automatically in the League One next year. So let's grab that after 90 minutes. And I'm going to grab that link and I will send it forward to everybody so that you guys have it. Let's go to the chat over here and boom. Cryptics joined us. That's awesome. Australia being able to join on these ones a little bit easier because it's not on at ridiculous o'clock in the morning. Could be performance of the season. Aaron, I think you're definitely right on that one. Um, everything was clicking today. The passes, we were just there, that, that section, we were just running downhill at them, right? Just absolutely running downhill at them. And so, um, I'm going to bring up the magic number stuff just so that I can assess this. And I'm going to bring up the league two standings beside it so that I can make sure that I've got this right with the current status of the table. I'm talking about this live. So let me take a little bit of time to make sure that I've got all of it right. The easiest way for me to look at magic numbers, which I've got being reduced down to five. You can argue that it's four because of goal difference, right? Uh, Mansfield being the only team that, although they're below us on on points by three points, um, them taking third, them taking second is of no consequence. The line is between three and four. So I'm going to be focusing on everything MK Dons and below. Um, MK Dons, they have a maximum number of points they can get at 83. Um, They've still got three games left. That's 12 points. That puts them up to 80. No, that's nine points. Sorry, that's why it didn't work. That's why I'm going to talk my way through this. Three points, three games left times three points, puts them up to a maximum of nine points. You add that to the 74, puts them at 83, and then you add one for the goal difference just to make sure. And and that's why... uh, our, our magic number really is five, and that's who we're viewing. They've got the highest number of maximum points available from everybody that's there. So we can clinch with a win. That gives us three points. A draw would put them into goal difference, and a loss by the MK Dons would put us into auto promotion. So you can fight next week about whether you want to support Mansfield or not. 
assuming that my math is right there. Uh, Barrow, their max now is 82. Um, they've got five games left because they were postponed today. They can five games left. That's 15 points. You add that to their 67 that they've got. That means their maximum is, is 82. And we can, with a win, draw uh, equal to their maximum point total, which they'd have to make up 12 goals on the run to be able to make it up. Um, if they draw or lose, we get it full and clear. As to crew, that we're equal with them on their max points now. They're at 79, and everybody else is officially mathematically eliminated. Crawley is now gone. Their max is 77. So crew, I mean, any draw by them, any draw by us, right now as it sits, if we were to not get any points and they won throughout, the best that they can do is, tr is tie us. So they'd have to make up uh, 15 goals. So really they're eliminated. It's Barrow. It's MK Dons. Those and, and arguably Mansfield, those are the three teams that we're that we're looking at to move. So things are looking glorious. Things are looking great. And I've got somebody in the chat. So let's go ahead and add them. Cryptic, my Gio. how are you, sir? Oh, so happy, so happy. You even you're looking as far down as Barrow. No, look, this is almost I'm done and dusted. I just realized my volume's off. So give me a second here, and then you. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, you're good. I'm just saying that um, I think you're giving Barrow a bit too much credit, and maybe us not not enough. I think oh, it's I think between it's us, us. Yeah, I think it's, that's it. Really, us and MK, and given that they're five behind, you know, it's. I just don't see them turning that around. Goal, um, difference, <laughs> goal difference with Barrow. Goal difference with MK. I mean, those are big asks, right? Even yeah. Even, even the difference between. Uh, I, I didn't update. I guess the goal difference uh, tally. We're now at twenty-seven. Yeah, uh, it's a dozen. It's 16. It's th that's that's yeah. a massive haul for them to go over. Goals for um is the second is the third tiebreaker, and that's a little bit closer uh for them. So you probably want to win it on goals dif goal differential, but we're in a very, very, very good state right now. That's it it could is. could well be over by the weekend. Yeah, it could. It could. Uh, could what do we want? We're actually looking for Mansfield to beat MK would be preferable for us, yeah? Or the other way around a draw. Well, a, a draw puts us equal on points, uh, and a win is is clinch outright. Um, does it really matter? D do you care about second and third? I mean, I guess it depends. Do you think that, Mans that we're that us and Mansfield are in the hunt for the for for the championship? No, stop ports to lose. Yeah. Really, that have that have to fall over, you know, for, for us to to get in. As as I've got the math here on first blush, a Mansfield win, it's over. If it's a draw. We're t the, the that would be a loss of two points for the Dons. They'd be to eighty one. Oh, you know what? We would still clinch out right. We would still clinch mm. out right. Um, That's what so I mean. It's all we need is points this weekend, and we get we're up. You know, so long as um, yeah, so long as yeah, MK. It's, 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 it's like a guaranteed clinch weekend this weekend, mm, mm, um, mm. and as long as MK doesn't win. If MK wins, then you delay the inevitable. It's looking like it's the inevitable, although I hope not to jinx it with. What yeah, happened. yeah, you don't want to get too far ahead of yourself. You don't want to get too far ahead of yourself until it's actually official. But it's almost actually official, isn't it? You know, we would have to fall over and score nothing from here to, which is possible. You know, there's no, there's no reason we couldn't do it. Um, I just rather we wouldn't. So I'm assuming we'd it, it hopefully be over this weekend at the race course, and I'm sure that's what Parker you'll be aiming for. And yeah. for me, he was man of the match. Everybody played well, but Parky's tactics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think his tactics worked brilliantly. Um, of course, we had the, the players executed the plan well and with skill on flair when required. Just a brilliant night all round. But the defensive efforts what won the match, you know. We let them have that rubbish ball and just stopped them with anything close to goal until the very end there. Yeah, it would have been nice to have kept a clean sheet, but, you know, hey, 4-1 yeah, and it. The celebration yeah. video playing at the time on the watch party at the time that the goal went in. Like, uh, <laughs> so, I was on camera yeah. at the time. I was like, no, I did that. Um, but there were, it was so quiet after the goal that even their fans were like, oh, okay, fair enough, yep. Yeah. And they'd already, you yeah. Just, just no more wreck samming it. One more. <laughs> yes. That's Luke, I think you've, you've hit the target right there. Um, and, yeah, beat Forest Green is really the only thing that matters. Kim Scott, if, if, if we do that, we're laughing and we're secure. And then it becomes the, the you know, is there enough runway to potentially c catch Stockport if they happen to hit a horrible – but Stockport's got an easy run in. Um, I, I don't care. 
they seem to yeah. get. Have you been Again, following on Twitter? Stockport County really trying yeah. to push a rivalry, ah. and, and, and uh, you know, I don't give two craps. They, they're looking for relevance, mate, and, and clicks. That's what it's all about. Yeah, um, but this is this is all about us. If we if we can't beat a, and if we can't relegate Forest Green, we don't deserve automatic. I'm I'm, I'm with you there. I'm, I'm you know, so you. even even as well as they're playing, given that they're you know battling for survival, or whatnot, at that stage or and at home, if we don't do it, yeah, it will deserve to um will deserve to go to extra squeaky bum time on the on the ladder. But I'm ex well and truly expecting us to do it this Saturday night. So I hope the house is ready to be awake at three o'clock uh, in the morning. No, ridiculous <laughs> o'clock in the morning. You have to be happy with the change on the crew time to be able to move. Now I get to feel what you guys feel having to wake up at three thirty in the morning. Yeah, this was a quarter to five kickoff for me. So I was up at, yeah, quarter to four for the team drop and whatnot. So still relatively early, but at least it wasn't a, you know, quarter to one. So <laughs> yeah, I got a couple of jobs this morning that I will get ready and, and, and go to. Not quite yet, but not too long after this. And um, enjoy the rest of the week with a smile because we, it didn't seem we had any injuries. Um, we played a few players, gave them some minutes at the end. I wonder, are we putting Jordan out there to get the plaudits before? Before summer, because um, we haven't seen a lot of him this year. Same with same with Hayden, not even making the bench. You know, it's like yeah, I, I can't see them pulling on the shirt for major major minutes again. But they've helped us get here, you know. So you you love them all the same and wish them the best. But um, it, yeah, it, how can you be anything but happy on a day like this after a performance like that? It's gonna be it's gonna be a fun one to end up watching through as we go through the last little bit. As far as this game went, I mean, you, there are a lot of things to pull apart. But if you were to pull and say that was the oh. highlight for me, pick pick a, pick a favorite moment <coughs> and, and let's have it. Oh, Brian, I do see you there. For me, there are probably a few. I mean, Max's defensive positioning is just superb. When he doesn't have the ball, just keeping their strikers away from the goal, away from having a shot, was just just superb. Some of Lee's passing, you know, especially those first two goals were the result of Lee's passing. Barnett getting it, Barney with his first. I mean, how good was that? Yeah, that There's hopefully that so much. I said, give, us, give us one, and you rattled off oh, three, and you only referenced one goal. Goal. <laughs> Yeah, but the, and that that was the other thing: the defensive work and the positioning. You know, we just we only had what thirty five if if um, percent uh, percent possession by the end of the match, and we just allowed them to have the rubbish ball and kept them out when it mattered and went at them when it mattered. It was just yeah, a, a brilliant masterclass of coaching. So there's my moment, Parky, man and, and of the I'll, match. I'll, I'll I'll pump a little bit more air into Clueworth's tires because what I've been noticing is he's to me his position positioning has always been good. Um, and, and, but his intuition was, was sometimes <sighs> off to his, the last three, four games. And today you saw that perfect example, Barney got beat over by Forrester on the left-hand side and came around and it was a snap of the finger <sighs> and Max just curls, turns around, gets low tackles, knocks it out. Danger covered. It was gorgeous. Yeah. And, and, and penalty averted too. I mean, he was milliseconds yeah. away from a penalty. That was just a brilliant tackle. Yeah, he, he, he was up for the challenge, and it was in a situation where it was a dangerous guy who's, I, I, as far as, as Crawley went, and I've been calling him crew all day, um, as far as Crawley went, I was only really impressed by their subs more than anything else. Lolos was, was, had one kind of quasi-run. Orsi was non-existent. 17 goals in, in the season. And did, did, we even call, did anybody call his name? Well, I've only seen like zero seconds of them play this year, so I know nothing of their. But from what I read, you know, they and, and what we saw last week with four goals against Mansfield, and they had four goals the week before. Mm. They can score, but apparently it's all from outside the box, and it was just a matter of not letting them have those shots from just the outside it was the box. A Twenty-five yard wall. The whole game mm. was a twenty-five yard wall. Yeah. Yeah. And we just didn't let them have those shots that they want to take, and we we just stopped them scoring. Yeah, it was I mean, yeah, the, the the plan perfectly didn't get sucked into into the ball that they didn't need to chase and just hold that wall up. Not that we played a bus by any means, but um, it was just clever clever management, clever play, and four one deserved result. Four nil's a better result, but you know four one a deserved result, and um, it, it's looking fingers crossed that when I get there in October, it'll be for the League One matches. That's so amazing. Up the town. Oh, I got, so looking I got forward to it. 
I got, stay with me. Um, I got Baz yeah, yep. that's just logged in here and I'm going to grab him and Brian at the same time uh, while we take a little bit, bit of a break. And for those of you who want to join and have something to say, there's a link down in the description <laughs> below, wherever you're watching, whether that be on Baz's channel, Dazzle Publishing, whether that be uh, the Red Horde, Local Pundit, uh, I think Matt's got his up. It could be on Twitter, it could be on Facebook, anywhere you are, find that link, send it over and I'll pump it into the chat while I'm telling everybody about it so that you can have a, a chat. Um, who do we start with? I guess, Brian, no offense, I'm just going to go with Baz because he's been a partner here. Let's go over to Baz, who was at, at the game, I'm assuming. Tell us, how much fun was that? Well, to be fair, I, uh, I had my son's passing out parade tonight. So, oh, right. um, yeah, with, with cadets. So, I, I got home with about half an hour to spare. And, and listening to Radio Wales, driving back home, short journey, uh, Wayne Phillips, Wrexham legend, was saying that, obviously, Crawley started both first and second half quite lively. Um, and he was convinced that if Wrexham got a third, um, although Crawley obviously looked threatening at times, that, um, yeah, he was convinced the floodgates was open, and, and naturally that's what happened, I think, with uh, Mullen and uh, Andy Cannon. Yeah, you'll have to watch that second goal that Mullen got because there's discussion about whether that was goal of the season. Cannon from the last one that scored in March, there were some other people with Mullen's back mm -hmm. heel, cryptic saying no. I adored the absolute hell of it out of it. I, I would say that I liked it, I liked it better. I know I'm probably in the minority. I was on the poll, but t for me, that one probably takes over from Cannon's goal. But it's worth certainly worth a watch. It was gorgeous. It was absolutely gorgeous. Um, well, as, as, as a shameless plug, Sean, just yep. um, before we get into the deep dive, um, I've just put a video out yesterday with the top 100 goals. Well, oh. Mullins, Mullins goals. We'll have to go uh, check the it. Club. So, wait, wait, uh, yeah, see, do that. Cryptic was on it. Yeah, watch that. It, they're well worth a watch. And that's certainly the piss take goal of the year. I'll give you that. And do yourself a favor, 25 yeah. minutes. Watch that Dazzle video. Superb. Yeah. Is go, and, and for anybody that you're watching, make sure you bump the subscribe button. It could be Dazzle Publishing. And if you're not, if you're watching on my channel or Dazzle's or the local pundit who's in the comments that was just there, um, go do the cycle around and give everybody some love. I'll tell you, it was a... It was a crazy day on the watch party uh, that I was doing. Um, <laughs> I had 40 gifts, 40 subs being, uh, 40 subscriptions being gifted out or memberships being gifted out and uh, lots of people just having fun. It was an entertaining day and everybody was in a good mood. So um, I'm super thankful for everybody that was over there and watching that. And it sounds, I'm assuming they had the same sort of fun over the local pundit. It's just nice having such a great Wrexham community of people putting out content so that uh, everybody can enjoy. Um, Brian, you watched that one, um, and you were, I think, li you were with me on the on the on the watch along. Tell us what did you uh, take away from that, and uh, tell us your favorite moment of that game. Well, you were my eyes on that one. I didn't ah, get okay, to watch it okay. today. Um, I, I had too much stuff going on at work today that I couldn't stream it. But so, no, I appreciate. Uh, yeah, we had a great watch party. Uh, close to three hundred views. Viewers yeah, well, I think we got to 377. It's it's it was the most I ever had was I think it was the Stockport game up 477. Um, but yeah, hitting lots of metrics and 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 growing. I think we got 50 subscribers today. It was just an absolutely nutty day for the channel itself. I am trying for those that are watching. I want to catch Chester FC. I think that the humor of having a North American fan of Wrexham surpass the actual football club Chester. <laughs> it would be a great way to give it the old double deuce. I won't stick my fingers up on the camera, but aces or whatever you want to call it. So, uh, well, the problem is we're going to be in a different league from them next year. So, well, we still are. We always are. They're not. They're not coming up, and we're not going down. So, oh, but, so yeah, we can yeah. always just rub it in. Um, so, there's the plug too for Baz's video, the hundred videos. So, you guys didn't get to see the goals. When you go back to see the the highlights, I, I kind of want to walk through each of them as we go. As we go. As we go through as them, and through I just got an them, echo got from somebody. Um, the the Barnett goal in the 21st minute, um, I don't know where that hit, hit him. That was a Lee sort of from the left-hand side right next to the 18-yard box, and he loops one over to the far post, and Barnett didn't get the best contact in the world, and I don't know where exactly it hit him. If somebody has a vote and wants to say lower forehead or did it get down to his shoulder, but it didn't come off of him with a lot of pace. And I thought, is it going to have enough pace to get across the line? It did. And it doesn't matter how much contact he got onto it. First one that goes across the line, they don't ask you how it went in. They ask you how many, and he's got one. 
Uh, that deliberate. He that was deliberate by him. I'm you think sure. that was deliberate? It was okay. anything by the hand. Deliberate when you first. It, yeah, I'm, if I was him, I'd be claiming shit. Yeah, I meant that, mate. It went exactly yeah. where I went it to. Wanted it to because he got the goal. Who's to say otherwise? <laughs> you know, so because he uh, the cross was great, but he's only a little bloke. He had to he had to get there, and he's not the you know he hasn't got the body to be able to hold his position. So that was just superb positioning by him, and it goes superb well, again. Uh, all credit for so, the possession pos- positioning for sure. Hmm. Yeah, go. Oh, I didn't mean I, to cut you off, and I did. That's my fault. So, how about this, right? Yeah, Appreciate the Barrow Barrow's match against Bradford's been postponed today. Um, crew now, uh, with their results, um, they beat Morecambe one nil this afternoon or this evening. Um, they officially now, unless we absolutely get pumped every game and they score five goals every game uh, in the remaining three games we both got. Um, there is not a chance now that um, Crew can surpass us realistically because the most they can achieve 79 points, which is what Wrexham have now got, and the goal difference they've got uh, plus 10, we've got plus 27. So for me, Crew are out the running. However, on the downside, what I would say is that Barrow now, uh, with their game postponed against Bradford today, they've still got five games to play, which means the maximum points they can get is 82. 82. So realistically and mathematically, we still need a win and a draw, depending on results. Um, yeah, I think and then we, win, we win Saturday. We're golden. We're golden. Um, yeah. yeah I, I because I mean, Mansfield still has to play Milton and Milton Barrow. Kings and Barrow. Yeah. So there's going to be points lost between those three teams. So as yeah. long as we can hold our home form, because God knows our home form is a lot better than our away form, we should be going into the last two games pretty much locked in. Well, Mans- Mansfield at home today have only beaten Forest Green one nil. So. Um, appreciating Mansfield, yeah. maybe we get, we get the you know the pick up the vibes that they may be on. A, I wouldn't say a free fall, but um, I I think that loss against Wrexham the other weeks really really dinted their confidence. Plus they they obviously suffered quite a few significant injuries. I think their defence was already well hampered, so maybe that's playing an impact. But um, just as we're getting players back from injury, so I'm hoping the the fates of the god are there and we're going to have everyone back from injury and. Uh, we're going to smash it out of the park. I'm feeling no. really confident <clears throat> after tonight. Um, oh, I would like to say a big shout out as well to Travis Herb. Thanks for watching the video. <laughs> There's um, those five the Barrow got, matches. Yeah. Those five Barrow matches have to be played within a very short period of time, though, it's, don't they're, they? They're, sa- yeah. they're Saturday, Tuesday, yeah. Saturday, oh, yeah. Tuesday, Saturday, all the way through. And if they have another one that's postponed, because they can't go after the last Saturday of the, of, of, of the league, they're going to have to fit that game in. I'm assuming yeah. it will go on a Thursday. They'll do. They'll do like a Tuesday, Tuesday, Thursday, Thursday Saturday. Monday. So I mean, Sunday they're going to be Sunday. running on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Sunday's tough too because then it's Saturday, Sunday, right? But mm. in any event, whether it's a Sunday or it's a Thursday, it's 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 just a mess if they end up having another postponement. So I guess are we praying for rain and barrel, making it as tough as possible? It doesn't matter. We're well in control. <laughs> We're well in Beat control. Forest, we win Saturday. We win Saturday. Yeah, so Kim, Kim's Kim's put a comment that Mansfield dominated the game against. Uh, Forest Green Rovers, so uh, I assume you must have been watching the game, Kim, or were you just sort of in and out across a couple of different games? Kim, come and join us and tell us, because <laughs> uh, I'm still waiting for Kim to yeah, even audio sure. only. We'll take the chat. Yeah. Kim always with the most brilliant comments, um, and and fully knowledgeable, and so being able to get her insight, I'm I'm all for uh, getting that sort of stuff. Stuart, have a good one. Uh, thanks for logging in and and doing your thing. It was uh, wherever you're watching, but we appreciate it. So. Um, the second goal, the one that, and I, I didn't write down enough notes here. I know it was the cannon cross that went to Mullen, and he, it's probably the, maybe the arguably the easiest goal that he scored out of the hundred. That was hundred and first at that point in time because he had a three foot little chip shot that he just had to kind of stick his boot out, um, perfectly served up to him from Cannon in the corner. But that one came downhill in a in, in a hurry, and everybody led the ball forward. Um, just it was a mob of red just sweeping down the pitch, and so that was. A gorgeous one, well worth the highlight. I won't even spoil it with the with the with the play by play because that was just beautiful. Go ahead. Oh, I will. I can't. I Connor. I um, mean, Boyle was good, but I Connor bringing in the ball out is next level, and it was him to Lee and Lee's great pass, Cannon Bank. Oh, I mean, I say Mullen, Mullen just tapped it in. He didn't do anything. You know, the, it was I Connor and Lee up the field who did the work on that. 
and that was just yeah great team goal let's let's talk about um obviously o'connor got in Boyle went out boyle has been solid uh, exceptionally impressive back there when we are dealing with a team like crew or sorry like crawley i've done crew all night but when we do a team like crawley um they're gonna you know that they're gonna set up at the 25 yard box they're gonna be searching for ball on the floor to get through and we we o'connor's preferred there than than boyle is and i and i parky obviously thought the same thing and went for it are we as fans going to be able to adjust if we end up with a team that does a lot of crosses if boyle ends up getting into the left into that left part of our back line or are we gonna uh, gonna be upset and frustrated because of what toc brings just curious trying to look at a negative because everything is so rosy was that the right selection or will it be down the road if Boyle slides in for O'Connor? I'm not sure on that point, but I think, I think for me, the, the strategic uh, sort of tactical substitutions I'd suggest when, when, you know, we've gone three nil up and then you've got the um, Mullin, uh, Barnes coming off. I think they're going to be key players in the running. And the other one, obviously Ollie Palmer came on to give uh, Stephen Fletcher a, a few extra minutes but uh, appreciating, I think that was the first substitution around 74, 75 minutes. 74, um, I got it. Jordan, Jordan Davis come on as well. He, he replaced yeah. um, Lee. Cannon. Yeah. Cannon. Cannon. Yeah. Can Again, Se Cannon. 76 I, minutes. When, when, I, when I saw Jordan Davis on the touchline, I thought that maybe it'd be Elliot Lee again. But no, I think I think it makes sense. Mm. He, he had a bit of a break at the last game against Colchester. So I think maybe just getting a bit of rest, you know, bringing off, protecting Cannon. He has been amazing the last sort of 10 games. He's He's been key yeah. to the results we have got in points. He's that, done what Elliot Lee did in the first part of the season. That goal so, from... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, and so for him, that, hence why I think you know he's now surpassed Elliot and man of the man of the um the player of the year calculations. Yeah. I think that's yeah. I think that competition is wide open, which is a credit to the depth. I think there's oh, I think yeah, there's five yeah. six guys you can make a legitimate argument for on the on on player of the season, and, and that'd be a, a fun debate to have out with everybody. Maybe before it happens, we all everybody picks a player and has an argument and we put it online and try to sell our guy because um, there's some real guys there. That goal from Lee. I think it was important because Parky doesn't like his subs. And I was sort of even at 2-0, it was like, okay, let's start to get Marion out there. Let's start to get Jordan out there, all that sort of stuff. That goal by Lee in the 76th minute, I think, encouraged him to pick up the pace with making sure some guys got out there and some people got a, a, a break. So that was that was helpful. Um, talking about the, the Lee goal, or sorry, the cannon goal, Lee nicks it in the middle of the field, picks his pocket, and he ends up oh. having a bullet of a shot, right footer. It was a good shot. A, yeah, a Come guy on. has to scream over to the left. And Adai, credit to him, able to make the first stop, and it just rolls right for Cannon. And Adai was right there. Not an easy goal to score, right? You've, you've got a big body who's still right in front of you who's just getting to his feet, but managed to find that far corner. Um, what did you guys see in that build-up? What did you like? Um, what were your thoughts? To be fair, I only looked down for a second. <laughs> I looked down for a second. I was making some notes. <laughs> and I looked up and Elliot Lee's like pounded his way right into the box and having a shot. At, it was a good shot, to be fair. Yeah, it was a nice, yeah, nice run by Lee with a powerful shot. Again, hit straight at the keeper, but it just forced that forced that error from the keeper, didn't it? And Cannon was just there. Great, great little dink because um he didn't have much to shoot at. It was a fair <laughs> fair angle, and it the was keeper was just a, in in his in his line of sight. So he's done well to score it. So no, a, another good team goal too, you know. It's not the first effort that gets the goal of the second, so they, they did well. It's not the first mouse that gets the cheese, it's the second one. <laughs> <laughs> I want to comment on the comment down there below. Ruby slippers, you excited for your first summer transfer window? No, you're not. The first the transfer <laughs> windows suck. They suck because all you're going to hear is speculation from a whole lot of people, including myself, who have Whining, absolutely no morning. idea what's going on. <laughs> Yeah. Assuming that they're football pundits, not okay, except for the local pundit, he's legit, but that th that don't know, and and get hearing rumors and getting excited about the rumor and then frustrated when they sign elsewhere and having no idea what's going on, it is so frustrating the w summer window. So um, enjoy it if you can. I don't like it at all. Um, it's the worst part of the summer for me because oh, there's, there's people in the know, in the know, and you'll see, you'll see the hashtag ITK on Twitter, all over the place, Facebook, Red Passion, wherever. Stay away from Red Passion if you want to know any transfer rumours, because it'll be 
not a good place to be. Um, it, it's whew, it's it's ferocious. Um, and and again, I love the fact that the the secrecy and the the cloak and daggery around who we are actually after and, and you know people speculate i think paul mullin transferred by the way only came about because a few people had seen a few youtube videos and thought oh he'd be a good player to sign he wants to come up north and then next thing you know um everybody knew it was happening and everyone knew it was on but um realistically i, I think parky has got runs a pretty tight ship there's obviously a few leaks in the camp you know we, we've seen screenshots of the moon um about 11 o'clock transfer deadline day uh, late at night everyone keen to see who we're going to sign last minute and then uh and then massive the full part. i'm looking forward to seeing the coverage on that one in the documentary that's for sure it just proves um to ruby's second comment there about it being awesome the tension the drama in your comments it just proves who's a masochist and who isn't because it's really about just self-loathing and self and pain that's what that's what the window is for me. Um, and, but I, there's going to be a lot of moves. It's going to be interesting to see if we do get promoted because there's going to have to be some some changes likely afoot, and we'll see what they look what they look like. I'm going to bring in Josh is with us as my backup um, is down, so I'm going to have to do a little bit of math here, and I've and I've got cryptic back, so I'm going to add him. Do you want yeah, to stay sorry. in? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, that was my my, my okay. hit the wrong button. That went boom. That's, that's all good. I'll keep you in here, and I'm going to grab Josh <laughs> to get the summary and tell you. You can tell us all about how his watch along went and his overview. How are you, sir? I, out of interest, Josh, as well. I'd be interested to know if you've had any uh, live comms from uh, in the field off um, Sheldon. I, I I was just I apologize just going down because he he has like. So, hey, by the way, hello everybody. He has full access to the local pundit, so like he might be going live. He's going with Stace, the player. So I was like, okay. So I was just trying to keep an eye on that. So excellent. So if if you're on YouTube and you got multiple screens, there's your idea yeah. to go to the local pundit and keep an eye on what could be loaded up because we could get a little special that uh -huh. goes on there. Or if he's got the mic, maybe he tell him to click the restream link and he can add it here. Yeah, that's that's what I was trying to figure out how to way to do. Yeah, uh, to you too. Yeah. Yeah. Like you can bring on here, so yeah. Um, but how, how's everyone doing today? What's going on? That was, that, that was how's that? Yeah, I'm I'm doing okay. How are you doing? Was that uh, acceptable and 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 a reasonable outcome from your perspective? <laughs> I, I'm I'm more. I felt like a fan, I felt like a true fan today. I was like I I was watching the game. I actually felt like a true fan. I was like this is a, I don't know who scored. I don't know who didn't score. I'm kidding, but like it was such a great. I was so I was so happy to see that today. I figured, and this is I put it out there. I was like I felt like the last game was the hump game you know on the Hasselhoff turf and then going back at home and like maybe we can go like release the hounds and go and have a have a victory i feel bad for ao uh, uh sheldon was at the match he's like he thinks he maybe hurt himself i don't know that's why he wasn't kicking but i wish we had a, a, a four four one wins a fantastic victory I'm, I'm so so excited like so excited um, Do you think so, he could have done better with the initial contact? He, he, he went down low to his right to get the, the, the obviously the shot to come across the goal, and it was, it was probably going out anyway. But he, he obviously nudged it out the court, resulting corner then led to uh, Lolos or Yolos or whatever his name was getting the consolation yeah. goal for Crawley. I, I, I uh, Sheldon mentioned that he thinks that he might have hurt himself. That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> <Right. laughs> Matt Coward will do a job. Wait, let's let's go to this comment. Games. Is this why Kim Kim has the reason why? Oh, he might be. Yeah, I hope he is. <laughs> let's, let's oh, got is it better? Right. Yeah. But I, I I mean he said he might have he might have he thinks because he wasn't kicking the ball, he thinks he might have hurt himself. He was literally right behind him uh, at, at the game. So I don't know. We'll see. Awesome. But we'll see. Um, yes, I'm buzzing. Allegedly, I, allegedly, in the fuck off. Yeah, I'm not in the know. I'm not in the know at all. <laughs> He's not in the know. He's like, ah, could be a rumor. Could not be. You, you, you know, you never know. But Hashtag one game to watch. ITK. <laughs> ITK. Out. No. Fun up. Awesome. By the way, Sean, I heard you were talking about your channel going off. That's awesome, man. That's really good. I think it was it, the it day. It was, a, it was a nutty day. Everybody was in a good mood. Um, I think there was 40 gifted memberships total. We went, went 50 subscribers, um, a whole lot of uh, super likes. It was a mad day. I'm curious to see at night what turns over. Um, we hit a milestone um, a couple of days ago, 20,000 hours of viewing time um, on the Red Horde in nine months. Um, so I'm appreciative that people seem to be okay with what I'm doing. Um, I just wish I had more time to do things. Um, but more exciting stuff to come. 
Um, so going back to this one, we've, we've gone through the goals. Um, oh, I just got, I keep getting dings telling me somebody's joining the group to jo chat with us and then they're leaving. So I don't know if somebody's pranking me or what's going on. Um, they're outside of the ground, right? Sorry, I, yeah, probably outside of the ground. Congrats. Um, so, yeah. the, la the only other goal that we didn't talk about, I mean, I'm not going to mention their goal, uh, unfortunate, whatever, but um, we didn't talk about the the Lee Mull or sorry, the, um, the Mullen one with the back pass in the 82nd minute, um, just hard work and a bad pass by the one guy on their team that Adeyamo who came in, I actually thought that he was doing okay down that right-hand side was if anybody was going to threaten, it was him. And, uh, and he, uh, he had the bad back pass Mullen going over there and taking it and adding the pot one in pretty much straightforward. I don't think there was any magic in it. It was just a freebie and you'll sort of take those, won't you? Full effort goal there, not giving. Yes, up right he did put yeah. the pressure on. <coughs> yep. Excuse me. Yeah, got a goal from work rather than from you know skill and class. But he, he, that that finish was class. But the um the the goal was pure work, and that's what Mullins known for. You know, his running today was just superb. Um, he just put in so much effort, and the, in defence, you know, again without the ball. They just covered so much area. Even Palmer, you know, they just ran their socks off today. The whole team, like you had that, there was that one series where you had Barnett take one off of the head and then you had Cannon right after him jump into a block. You had everybody with, when they were up pressing, they were there threatening. We were closing gaps all over the place in good possession. It was, it was damn spectacular. Whose photo is that? Uh, somebody on Twitter, I've just seen it. Uh, somebody called Claire. Uh, CJ Davis Claire. So, yeah, she's just for that. Things we love to see on Twitter. <laughs> Gorgeous. How good's that? Gorgeous. CH Davis. I missed the, t I missed the Twitter. Well, we'll C find it. C yeah, at CJ Davis Claire. At CH oh, okay. Davis Claire. So, look, look that one up and pull it. That looked gorgeous. Yeah. And, um, so yeah, lots of people who are celebrating getting the gifted subscription stuff. But it, it, I mean, at the end of the day, this is going to be the shortest after 90 because we're just all going to sit here and clap our hands and celebrate. And that was about as good as it could have got. You were nervy going in, recognizing that if it was a loss, we were in danger. No, not the end of the world, but we put ourselves into danger territory and a win secures it. Um, we did the job, right? I think, I think what you could do is look forward and think, okay, McFadgen on the bench this week. Does that mean Hayden, Jones, Tunnycliffe uh, so far off that they're not even being considered for the last three matches? Because who do you who do you bring in on, onto that bench for Forrest Green? You know, because now with three left and Forrest Green win that and that's it. Does he um, does he bring Dolby back and have three forwards on the on the bench and and? Drop McPadgen? Do we are we replacing Howard? You know Howard into goal, and then we got to bring um, Leighton. You know do we? Do uh, we you, no, uh, you, wait one more. you wait one more. You don't because because <laughs> what happens if it goes south, right? I think you, you wait till you get the clinch, and then and then you worry about it for the last two, and you have your celebratory tour um, with whoever you want to play out there. Uh, you know, I, I, oh, and I guess there might be some people that will, that's my take. But I, and I can also see the opposite. Is there anybody who wants to argue and says, well, as long as we're still in the opportunity to chase down the title, you take your run at the title, right? Or is it somewhere in the middle? I think I, think, I hear uh, I, I hear a cryptic, but I I I, it, I, I don't. I forward. was more I was more wondering about how badly injured some of those players must be if they're not getting on the bench ahead of McFadden. Yeah, and and therefore we're not seeing them. So I'm worried about actually our lack of depth at the moment. You know, our depth is looking a little thin with these last three matches left. So that you're yeah, talking, so you're, I, talking, you're talking wing backs, right? And if you're talking wing backs, uh, Mendy's, got, uh, Mendy's got the hammy. Forties, I don't yeah. think is expected back this year. Yeah. This year. So who else? Yeah. Do you put? That's that Jones. Kind of well, Jones. Jones. Ex not, probably not expected back either. James Jones. Yeah. Um, Hayden. You know. So, he he may not play again this year. Um, Young may be not injured, but you know he may not play again this year. So there's. I'm just thinking about that. That depth is looking a little thin for again. Um, again, maybe the back because McDadgen's the plug-in anywhere player. You know that is there not though the specialists that we have for maybe wing back and and midfield to to sit there as well. Anyway. Yeah. 
I, I, I just want to go ahead, Josh. Go ahead. I'll come back. Go ahead, only light on the left side. Sorry, I apologize. Sean. It's a bit of a, I think it's only, we're only on the left side because of Mandy. Uh, the right side, I think we're covered. I also think at the same time, this is going to be the lineup for the rest of the season, uh, it, it, unless something happens. I mean, I, you know, that's that's what I think. But um, you know, Geo and Stash, I think coming back into the lineup has totally changed things around. Yeah. The class and the two of them. Um, it's just opened things up. And I think that's what when it went pear shaped in the middle of the season, in my opinion, of why it went down. But uh, you know, the only thing I think we're le- we're light on is that left wing back. So I could totally see see that what you're saying. Yeah. And again, you, you got TLC all play there. Um yeah. and you've got Will Boyle that could drop into that central defensive um position. Um how good was Clowith's um lunge at that ball, um putting it out for a corner, but the the maturity um the timing it was impeccable it was a thing of beauty and i tell you what that that player i i was talking recently down in the turf in wrexham to a guy um who who's played professional football at a decent level um he's involved with championship level coaching and also involved in the the welsh development um level and he's adamant that without a doubt max cloweth is going to be a 1 million plus signing now rex rexham or, or transfer um at some stage for rexham because there will inevitably come a point where hopefully we we recruit a replacement um capable of dealing at a higher level but then for max cloweth without a shadow of a doubt his age was he 22 and i think he he can definitely the, the way he's matured his consistency um the way he talks he, he's destined for championship plus um without a stretch of the imagination and I think... keep your hands off him he's destined to be a wrexham oh, captain no. He's destined to be a Wrexham captain, and and nah, don't yeah. we don't need the money. Sign him up. We don't need that. We don't need the money. He, he's he's a local lad now. He loves playing for the club. He's he's part of the growth from being a seventeen year old scrawny little kid in the national league. You keep him, and he'll be a captain in a couple of years. So keep your bloody hands off him, championship. For the cop. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, someone's got to pay for the cop, but two mil piss off, yeah. mate. No, nah, no. Nah. Keep you your money in your pocket. <laughs> Did you see the attaboy that he got from O'Connell after uh, one of the challenges there? Uh, yeah, head. yeah. Like, that was, I was like, that's why you do that, so well. And, you know? and, and, and that's why you play there too. You're playing for your mates and you could walk to a championship club for $37 million and be in the shittest dressing room in town and you're on 37 mil and you're thinking this isn't fun. But he's playing with his mates and he's winning and he's happy. Sign him up. You can't – that smile is – uh, ear, ear. It's 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 fantastic. Yeah, it's, yeah, you know, yeah. It's, it's a pretty good pro- problem to have, right? Yeah. Are we going to take a whole bunch of money and deal with some 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 benefits from it, or are we going to have a, a kid who can be here for an extended period and really prove himself and do his thing? It's it's a wonderful problem to have. Also, he showed up Harry Maguire's brother. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah who's Harry Maguire's brother? Is, is that is that Forrester? No. no. Maguire's know. brother was playing on the other side. Oh, was he? I missed all. Yeah, and Harry Maguire was there. Oh, so so for somebody who doesn't somebody who doesn't give much shit about other teams apart from Wrexham, I heard that too. Who the hell's Harry Maguire? Sorry for my ignorance. <laughs> Who's he play for? It's a movie. Uh, United well, England. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so by the way, Daniel, I am in Rona. Harry Maguire. <laughs> yeah, he's not a popular <laughs> central no, defender. Not. I but, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Max. Just, Max is twenty-two in August, so he's he's got such a you know he, he he's he's not going to peak for another five years. You know what I mean? And, and, and old enough to drink. Now. <laughs> yeah, that trip to Vegas will finally be a good one. <laughs> in the states, right? I, I I do want to take a pause. There were some people that we talked about the the idea of competing for the championship, and just to put it into perspective of where that is for us if we're trying to do that our maximum points we can end up obtaining is now sitting at 88. That's a five point difference um, with Stockport just, just to tie them. So you're going to need to get at like two losses out of Stockport and for us to win out. And that's two losses. They've got four left. They've got Morecambe, Knott, Accrington, and then us. Um, Is it foreseeable that they could lose one of those while we take out um, Forest Green and Crew, so that the last game means something. Sure, um, we can't tie them. We have to. They've got a goal difference at 41. Uh, it's probably higher today. 42 now. 
Um, so, so they're, they've been averaging two points per game. They're, they're projected to get to 90. Uh, we would have to win out the rest of our games, not entirely out of the question. Um, but more importantly, with who they've got left, they've got Morecambe at home and Morecambe's uh, just playing for a playoff spot and trying to get in. Notts County, who I think today are, were they eliminated uh, from everything. And then, and then they've got uh, Accrington, who's, who's eliminated from everything and playing dead rubbers. So they've kind of got a free path to go forward, which is why I don't, unless Stockport completely falls off a cliff, I've put a... a, a a, a four Their championship, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> same, same. But but there are still people, and all the more power to it, who say, "Let's go for it and see what they get." Um, Intente. Yeah. 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 We and just we'll need to take care yeah, of when business. I, when I, when I, oh, I mean, life for it. I mean, I switched on around yeah. sixty minutes. All, all of it. <clears throat> Gone. I was just going to let let's go for it. Really, just means winning it, winning it crew, doesn't it? You know, like we got to win at Forest, we got to win at home this week to to get promotion. We win at crew, okay, and then it's up to the last match. And if, if it comes down to it, it comes down to it. But forget about it; it doesn't matter, you know. And I'm sure that Park is going to be thinking that too. You know, don't even look at Stockport. Last match will happen. If it means something, it means something. If it doesn't, we win this. We win this weekend. That's it. That's all that matters. And we get promoted. The the, the yeah. rest will happen. And it's not in our hands, and we can't affect it in any way. So there's just there's zero point looking at it. That would be fun, though. The comment there from Matt thrown out there it would be a piss if not helps us out, takes out oh. <laughs> and lines yeah, the lines yeah. last game give us a shot at the championship. Then what yeah, we said yeah. over a case of American gin and and uh, four walls whiskey and still coffee and say thanks very much for the. Is the line the period match. still open? Can we loan him a few players for that match? Is that or is that done and dusted? Yeah, <laughs> I, but that would be fun. Yeah, yeah. no, it's. Hey, are we, up, oh. are, we up, are we up? Are we up for getting John in here? Um, just put. A, a yeah, I, I'm going to need to get ready for work. So, guys, thank you. Been a great space. Been a great day. Been a great night, and going to be a, a, a good week up the hopefully promotion winning town come this weekend. So, guys, I'll um, catch up with the rest of this when I get back from work. So, thanks, Apes. Thanks, 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 guys. I think that's the first I'm time I've seen it because my my yeah. other link blew. Sorry, so. No, Josh, take over for me just for five minutes here because my other my backup went down, which I was using to filter everything. So I'm okay. going to have multitask here. So go ahead. Okay. I got you. Uh, so I, I think that's the first time I've seen Cryptic. Uh, I seen Cryptic in person. I've always like heard his voice. He's got a he's got a great voice, Shit. by the way. Like one of those voices. Yeah. Like a lot, lot going on with the championships up here. Or uh, uh, John is uh, still needs stock to draw in addition to the loss at Snots. Uh, he's got some Snots. Um, it'll come down to the last match of the season, Wrexham style. I mean. Uh, come on, what, if that's that's a dream. That's an absolute dream. What do you guys? What do you guys think of that? So, was, so, so disappointing though because I I turned the TV. Well, I, when when I got home, um, it was about sixty minutes in, and it was one one, and then no sooner had I gone out to get to get changed, um, getting some football gear, settled down for the last half hour, and Paddy Madden pops up. And his shiny, I, I don't know if he scored with his shiny head or if, um, you know, there's a bit more class to it. But again, it doesn't matter how you score and does it when you're winning. But uh, yeah, just a bit of a, a shame, really. I I, th I thought Colchester, um, OK, maybe a little bit deflated. But the, the shocking thing, looking at the stats, both Colchester and Stockport only had three shots on target. Um, with Colchester having eight shots and uh, ten for Stockport. So... Uh, doesn't sound like the most fill in the games. Uh, Fifty-four percent stock poor, but again, I, I, I'm, I'm quite settled as long as long as we we get promotion. You know, I've I've been stuck in the national league for fifteen years. Um, back to back promotion, I can handle that. I, I just the the dream though would without a doubt get down to that final day where if we win. We go up champions. That that's gonna be one hell of an atmosphere. Wayne's obviously advertised for anyone who's watching local or coming over to the game for Stockport. 
um, yeah. that um, he's going to put a ticket on sale on Monday. I think four quid just to give him a shout out. But you've got to get him from the Butty van. So um, if, if you're traveling over for the stock booking, you might want to get friendly with somebody a bit more local that could get your wristband or tap into Welshy 1000. I think it is on Twitter. See if he'll save you one. But uh, I think it's about four quid a ticket. He's got about 400 and some of the money's going to charity as well. So awesome. Um, that's great. That's going to be one hell of an atmosphere either way. I don't know if you guys are in the twi- uh, in the in the in the, um, uh, in the Discord, and I don't want to share it just because um, because it involves uh, Stacey's kid. But uh, Stacey sent us a photo in the Discord, and I know you, some of you guys are in there of uh, Caleb with um, Caleb with Harry McGuire. So, <laughs> oh, awesome, awesome. Yeah. That's, that's so, cute. That that'll be good for Caleb. So that, good stuff for Stace to get that one. Yeah, snuck and in. Got, I, uh, Toby is. Okay. Uh, no, sorry, I just wanted to chat about about this one really quick. Tobias, um, I'm not going to sing on this one because nobody else needs to be penalized for that. If you go to the Red Horde, you can oh. catch the singing. I'll leave that one all over on itself. Come um, on, but- Sean. Oh. You're going to leave those guys hanging? That's the, that has to be the new chant that goes around the, uh, K. Ross. I mean, that's uh, somebody's just uh, what, what? And now I got to think of what I did. So it was, it was um, the lion in in the K. Ross, K. Ross, the mighty K. Ross, the lion prowls tonight in the race course, the mighty race course, the Lion King scores tonight. Hey, right. hey. E-A-O-A-O-E-O-B-O-A. Let that one roll. <laughs> Let that thing go. Um, somebody needs to do that because you can. How many, how many how many super thanks did you get for that one then, Sean? I think I got a buck ninety nine. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. Done. <laughs> Mic drop. Yeah. There you Maybe go. not with as much singing, but I can see a whole bunch of Welshmen screaming that out um, when Andy's out there. I don't know. It'd be fun to, to get something out there. I don't, I don't know about <laughs> you. Guys he does. Oh. Da, da, da. He doesn't sing like a Welshman, no, you're right there. Um, he's got a bit of practice, so I'm not going to have a go at it. Seems like I'll, a Canadian, I'll just destroy it now, but I was, I was up way too That's late the most last ne- night. Hold on. Time out. Sorry, Baz. That's the most negative thing that John's ever said. And I. Uh, one night, nice. And, and John's, yeah. John's always the way, Sorry, I didn't mean to walk over you, Baz. Go ahead. Um, no, what I was going to say is, you know, uh, on a, a token, you know, while we've got a few few of the normal hosts around the, the table um you know i'm really really starting to enjoy this this is one hell of a run in you know and it's great week to week you just don't know which way it's going to go we're up we're down um teams knocking results off other teams um you know and, and the work that goes into to making these chats and and some of the match day vlogs or you know the, the the watch parties um you know we do it because we enjoy it but a lot of effort time money goes into it so you know a, a shameless plug just um if, if you're on one of the channels um you've got the possibility of doing super thanks memberships um and that subscribe button because say last time i looked a couple of months back 70 percent people watching the videos don't hit the subscribe button um it gives you the notifications pop up when the next one comes up and, and we're gonna have some great content going on between the the, the groups and uh, appreciate we haven't got welsh b sports on today two beards um he's he's uh he's a bit of a late night now the clocks have gone uh forward in the uk uh, he did he did gain an hour for a week or two um, and obviously Matt Racecourse Ramble. Uh, I don't think I've missed anyone. Oh, uh, Paul as well. Um, the Up the Town show. Um, he joined on Saturday in my absence. Uh, it's great to have him on board. Got some great ideas. We've been discussing that we can do with the group, and um, he'll he'll certainly be planning to join in the future as well from Kentucky. So if you haven't already subscribed to the Up the Town show, yeah, check it out. Uh, oh. Stacy's trying to join. She said. Stacey's trying to join, so I'm looking forward to that. I'll keep an eye out on on on. That. And I do want to. The only other thing that I that's sort of coming and developing and all that sort of stuff, and and may have a role in it. And we're ironing out the kinks. And and I'm gonna challenge myself. The Igwilwal Gok Festival that's happening. Gok. I can't get the Gok sound right. But it's the Red Wall Festival that's happening in Wrexham, uh, May 31st to June 2nd. And they have a whole bunch of stuff that's going on, all football related. Some of it will be about artistry and poets. Some of it will be about disability access to football. Some of it will be about coaching and that sort of stuff. Um, Writings regarding uh, things. We may be uh, discussing it live streaming from North America over there to meet people that attend that festival. So if you're in town in May 31st to June 2nd, uh, check that out and 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 check out uh, the Red Wall Festival 
a while holiday before. weekend yeah. here in the states yeah i've got i've got dance recitals so it might have to be an early morning thing but anyway there's lots of stuff going on if you haven't had a chance to join the link i sent it out there feel free to come and join us i've got five people but i think the other one is me oh it's, we've got erwin i'm gonna add erwin here and we'll get a chat erwin how are you hey guys can you hear me yeah. well, we can hear yes. you and so what I'll, what i do when i get pe new people in here is feel free to let us know your uh, Wrexham AFC history and how you came to, to meet the club and then tell us your thoughts on the game. Yeah, sure. Um, I started uh, watching probably like a year ago or so, like actively watching the games. I started hearing about the club when the takeover took place. I was following some people on social media who really followed it closely. So I was kind of vicariously looking through them to see what was happening. But then by the end of last season, of course, things got very excited. So um, I started watching some games. And then this season, I've been pretty much watching every game, uh, joining in some of those fan channels. Uh, Josh, I've been on your channel uh, in the chat mostly, uh, on the Discord, and also here on the Red Horde. It's really fun to watch. Um, also great to hear you guys talk about it, of course. Uh, I'm from the Netherlands, by the way. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, Which, which yeah. part in the Netherlands? I'm from the so southern part, so close to the Belgian border. A uh, city called yeah, Breda. I'm not sure way, if you're yeah. familiar, but um, down down towards Aachen or something like that, yeah. Uh, more west, so Aachen is like ah, okay. the German border. I'm more more west, really uh, ah, okay. close to Belgium, much. Um, but yeah, uh, this match was great performance. Um, great to see the team show up. Um, I will say by the end of the game, everyone did look a bit tired, but they did fight very hard, I, th I thought. Um, overall, I was very happy, very excited to see uh, uh, Barney get his goal, uh, Cannon, of course. Uh, yeah, it looked great, so very excited to see what oh, happened. Awesome. Did you have a highlight at all? And I, I see Stacy's joined, so I'm just going to add her here momentarily. I, I, I'm looking at a lamppost, so I don't know if she's... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there she uh, is. Highlight so go ahead, me, um, hard to say. Cannon, I would say his goal for me was fantastic <coughs> to see for him to get that goal for, with all the work that he's put in the last few games, especially. Uh, and that's, and that's a byproduct of hard work too, right? Is because Lee had that crack, but Cannon didn't rest up. He still continued chasing that ball and was there for the yep. effort. I think that, exactly. that was a sign of the whole team, but I'm, I'm with you, the Lion King doing his thing. Um, I don't want to cut you off, so stay on there. I just want to make sure we grab Stacy because I don't know how our internet connection is, and I don't want to lose out on the I chance. Sorry, I don't know, don't know if you've seen the comments there. It said uh, from MDR, uh, I'm going to try my best Dutch here, but or Flemish, but Groetjes uit Alkmaar. Yeah. Groetjes terug. There she is. And 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 I'm going to be clear before I introduce Stacy. I wasn't calling you a lamppost. <laughs> I was saying all I saw was a lamppost. <laughs> Stacey, it's a pleasure to see you as always. You look gorgeous. How was that day for you? Um, really, really good. Um, I've just introduced Sheldon to a lot of the players, so awesome. he's had fun. Um, we just had a long chat with um, Mendy, McLean, Fletcher, um, all of them, really. So he's Beautiful. buzzing. I think he's coming on in a minute. I've just left him. I hope he doesn't come on. He, he does. A, he sees us all the time. He, he should be chatting as long as people will chat with him. Yeah. Um, he introduced him to Humphrey as well. So I think he was buzzing with that as well. Actually, Caleb did. Here's Caleb. Hey, Caleb. That's awesome. <laughs> he's like, all right, quick, get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, Sheldon messaged me. He said he, he was still, he said he talked to Humphrey. Uh, so that was, that's pretty awesome. That's great. <laughs> That's down to Caleb. Caleb said, Humphrey, this is my friend Sheldon. Now shake hands. <laughs> so funny. By the way, Sheldon got noticed. Sheldon got stopped on the road today when he was out and uh, and, and was like, hey, I know you. You're Sheldon. You, and uh, so good on Sheldon today. Got actually stopped by someone on the street. Awesome. Josh, you've, you've been asked, what are you drinking? Oh, uh, it's uh, liquid death. It's water. There you go. Well, yeah, future sponsor, water, hydrate everyone. There you go. There you go. And, and there's the message down below. Check out the local pundit pregame show. Sheldon is a legend, and he is yeah. indeed. Much love to everybody who's doing their thing. And I love the yeah. fact there's so much content. And people can choose what they want to do and find whatever pathway they find to the club at the end of the day. Of the day. Um, oh, Caleb. Caleb, how are you, bud? I'm fine. Awesome. I love it. It's nice to see you. Yeah. 
I was asking. So you sent the picture to Discord of uh, of him and uh, of him with uh, Harry McGuire. Uh, how was that? How'd you get that happen? Make that happen. Um, McFadgen, I call him McFadge. McFadgen um, introduced him to Harry Maguire. He said, "Come here, mate." I can't do his accent. That's the kind of how he says his accent. Um, this is little Caleb, and this is Harry Maguire. And Caleb's like, "Yeah, I know who Harry is." <laughs> See, that's it, it. It wasn't Caleb meeting Harry Maguire. It was Harry Maguire meeting Caleb. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Get it right. Yeah, that's awesome. I, really, I got a bit nervous to be honest. I went, "Cheers, Harry," and then I walked off like I knew him. Like, "Cheers, Harry." <laughs> <laughs> Give him an Adam, Adam boy as well. Any way out? Yeah. So, there Stacey, I'm I'm curious because you were there and you're our eyes on for everybody else that wasn't. You know, we all were watching on streams, and Vaz had uh, a commitment that he couldn't end up going to. Um, anything happen in the stands or in the crowd or something that was uh, atmosphere type like or that you saw that we maybe not got on the TV that was really exciting other than the, the pre post match stuff that you had meeting the players? Um, I would say that's the loudest I've ever heard the ground uh, awesome. this season. It was so, so loud, um, including myself. I got shouted at for swearing a bit too loud. <laughs> um, it was very exciting. Just the whole atmosphere was different than usual. Um, yeah, it was just amazing. Uh, Caleb is absolutely buzzing, he hasn't shut up, so yeah, it was amazing. Um, it, it did the sound good, just looked so relaxed on the pitch as well. And I was talking to Liam Hall, which is our young goalkeeper, for a while after the game, then, and he said, You know, the lads were saying to me that we're just going to take each game as it comes now, forget about what's coming up and see how we get on. And I was like, well, a fucking show tonight, it's working. Carry on with that mindset. Um, so it just shows they've switched their mindset a little bit and taking each game as it comes, rather than worrying about, are we going to do it? Or oh, we've got this team next to play. So, yeah. Um, there's a question for you, Stacey. If you can't read, if you can't read your... Screen. So sorry. I'll just get this question out um, for Ruth or for from Ruth to Stacy. Have you talked to Mendy, and do we know how he's doing health wise? Yeah, I've just been with him. Um, he's on crutches. He's uh, he, he's in a lot of pain. To be fair, um, yeah, I'm not gonna yeah, give much away, but Darn. yeah, he's uh, Darn. yeah, he won't be playing for the rest of the season. Though. I know that he's like what five games left, but still. Yeah, he's on crutches. He's uh, he's not great, but yeah. And and you've added you, you've added three three games left. Forest Green, Crew, Stockport. That's our running. We're, we're down to the nitty gritty oh, yeah. here. Go ahead. I think that was Baz yelling out for Matt. Yeah, I was just going to say, Mark Mark Lister's put a comment that Wrexham now. If you if you were to go to the bookies tomorrow and put twenty five quid on Wrexham to get promoted, you'd win one quid back. So uh, it's looking favourable. Um, and, and for those who've just joined up, maybe missed earlier, we were looking at some stats. Crew, realistically, now are going to be out the running to overtake us. Um, Stockport, by the way, I don't know if this come up earlier, maybe, but Stockport now, I believe, a guaranteed promotion because they've secured 83 points after their win 2-1 uh, away at Colchester today. We, they were drawing around 60 minutes until Paddy, Manon's, Paddy Manon's, uh, Madden scored on 61. Um, so realistically, now uh, the most that MK Dons can score is, is 83. eighty-three points. But they can make up that for thirty far, goals. Far, far inferior <laughs> goal difference. They've got sixteen goal difference against Stockport's forty-two. So Stockport are up now. So um, eases a bit of pressure on them. Obviously, they'll be wanting to win the next game because they'll be wanting to open the gap up and get the championship without a doubt. But that mindset, whereas I think quite a few fans, and certainly from what I'd seen on social media and heard, the first half at Colchester for Wrexham, and I think Josh touched on this point earlier, is that I, I was certainly nervous. I, I Although four, five, six weeks ago, I thought that was a dead cert win. Going into the game, I was quite nervous because knowing what our away form's been like, I just felt that... It could, it could be one of them games when I saw the state of the pitch, um, it was absolutely shocking. And I, I heard we were dog shit, for want of a better term, uh, the first half on Saturday. And and then, no fist pumps from Mullin. 
Um, fans singing, we only we, we never win away, um, which has really annoyed him. Struck up a massive furore on Sunday afternoon on on Twitter, Facebook, all the other social media outlets. Um, probably taken out of context following his post match interview. But I think, you know, and, and the other thing as well, let's not forget Danny Cowley, the Colchester manager, reporting that um, in his post-match speech, the Wrexham players having a proper go at each other at half-time going into the tunnel. Now, if that's not passion, you know, wearing your hat on your sleeve, playing for the badge, the, these players, I, I think, from what I saw in that 30 minutes at the end, they were really fired up for it. So my question, Stace, was... Um, to get back on point, um, I heard Crawley started the game quite lively. Um, before the, the first two goals went in, were you confident? Because you mentioned that the players were playing comfortably, the free flow football, playing with confidence. Um, what what was the first maybe 15, 20 minutes like, Stace, in the ground? I wasn't worried at all. Um, no. We'd done our homework. You can see we had. We were playing quite high up. I was talking to Sheldon and a few others in the pub before. Don't do that, then we're screwed. We did that just right. Oh my God! What the hell was that? You get high beamed? That just turned on. Sorry. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> hell! Um, I was I was comfortably sat in my seat knowing we were going to win it to be honest and that's not being arrogant you can just see the way we were playing they felt relaxed the players they looked very very relaxed on the field um which made me relaxed that's a call back to the lamppost and brian's just signing out here so brian back to work for you hey thanks so much for joining in much appreciation much love we've got uh oh man that lamppost comments going to get us sheldon's looked in got to get him to stay his his two cents here while he's there walking in the darkness sheldon how was that great to see you, Brian. Uh, i really enjoyed that it was a great match <laughs> i assume so i was worried it might not get off with all the rain that was coming down in the morning and that saying mm. it's got to stop were you worried about it, it was really bad i was for a while yeah i must admit i was for a while um but when it stopped it stopped straight um uh, immediately and the sun started to come out it started to brighten i was like okay we have enough hours here for the pitch to be back in order and it was it was looking lovely so is, that is underground the... that underground heating is definitely going to pay off in the summer isn't it <laughs> <laughs> sheldon how many games have you been to at the race course uh this is the first at the race course okay and so if the, these are the results we can expect with you in attendance is the message that we need to have a GoFundMe to basically make sure that you're in every game I yeah, we can do. Up. We can do that. <laughs> the, the players, um, when I introduced them to some of the players, that they said, "Oh, is this the first match you've been to?" And he said, "No, I went to the Stockport one, and every single one of their faces went, ooh, that's not a good." <laughs> <So they're... laughs> Disinvite. Yeah. Don't go to away games, Sheldon. No just, away just games. Home ones, yeah. <laughs> Luckily, we got more home than away. Um, I just wanted to pick up on a quick point there that Marie, Marie had put that Mullins is now the uh, third top scorer in the league. Um, just I, when I was looking earlier, I think he's actually the the fourth or joint fourth. So you got Langstaff on twenty five, Smith on twenty three for Salford, Evans twenty for Newport, Keeler Dunn nineteen, and Mullin nineteen. But the the minutes per goal. Um, joint fourth on that as well, um, with 142 minutes per goal. He's played 19 games, scored 34, and assists five. No, so, sorry, Is that that can't be right. 34 goals. You know, no, no he's scored 19, and he's played 34. I got that the wrong way around. Got it back. Yeah. Erwin, yes. while, uh, while five you're assists. On... While you're on here, have have you been to a Wrexham match? Do you have designs to go over? Any I would love to, to go. Yeah, I haven't been yeah. yet. Um, maybe next year. This year, probably not. But maybe next year. Yeah, it's because of my house situation. I'm waiting for next year. Um, so we'll yeah. see how that all pans out. And I'm, see I'm interested. Sheldon. I don't actually, want any pictures, Sheldon. I'm interested, Irwin, um, because um, obviously the 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 Dutch. Um, you know, total football for me back in the day. Um, I had some big teams, and and the, the the Dutch team. Many many British fans have always thought that sometimes the 
the Netherlands have been unfortunate where they've had some real big stars, individual players that sometimes just hasn't worked out and seen them missing out on some big tournament glory. Um, who's who's your um, Dutch team that you follow out of interest? Um, like my know. main team is Ajax, but they're ah, Ajax, not really yeah. performing this season uh, with all this stuff going on there. Um, and my local team, um, Nak Breda, they're called. They play in the second uh, division. Um, a bit of a smaller club, but in terms of atmosphere, I think it's probably similar to Wrexham. If I see like uh, what's going on there, the atmosphere there is always great. I've been to um, a lot of matches there, and it's always great going there. Even though the football isn't great, um, the atmosphere is great, the people are great. A lot of people within my surroundings go to every match, so I always join them whenever I go, and uh, it's always a good time. But my main team, Ajax, um, they used to be good. This season, not so good. You can have uh, Ten Hag and... back. Sorry? You can have Ten Hag back. <laughs> well, when he was with us, he was better than he has at right. United. Yeah. June 6th, so... if you can get to Rotterdam. Canada's coming over to shock the world. Part of our Copa America buildup, we got uh, the Dutch oh, yeah. and then we got the French. So that'd be interesting. Yeah, rather than I, I even though it's the biggest rival of my main team, uh, Feyenoord, they have the nicest stadium too. So I might get the ticket for a Canadian match then. Joel I've only there. ever been. I've only ever been to one Dutch stadium. It was uh, Arnhem Vitesse. Uh, Liverpool were playing in the UEFA mm -hmm. Cup, probably early two thousands, and uh, yeah, they destroyed them. But we, we had, Liverpool had a very poor team at the time. But um, okay. you know, it was great. The atmosphere, the the ultras behind the goal with the yeah. massive drums and the mm -hmm. flags, and 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 at that time there was a real surge. Um, to try and drive and, and get the 12th man set up at the race course um, in the tech end where we were trying to invest in big flags, um, you know, trying to get the big drums and the atmosphere going across the whole stand. Um, typically, you'll go to either home or away. Away games for me, the atmosphere is so, so much better because, mm. you know, everyone's been on the ale. Um, yeah. You've been drinking on the bus down, maybe four, but especially in the National League where 20 of the teams were all based down south. So you'd be, you'd be in for a real day out. Um, I think the worst season, we only had three teams up in the northwest to, to, to travel to. So there was a lot of long Tuesday, Saturday road trips, um, which obviously led to um, not, not as many fans. They weren't sellouts as, as they often are nowadays, mm -hmm. but... Um, you know, going back to some great road trips, um, the yeah. atmosphere, the singing, the getting behind the team. And and I think some, some Colchester fans were saying how impressed. I seen a video on Twitter the other day or Facebook about just filming the, the Wrexham fans singing towards the end of that, that game. And they were like, wow, what fans. Unbelievable. And it seems yeah. very much I... that way at the race course <clears throat> across the, yeah. the ground today. Today, I found it really interesting um, with regards to who was singing in the stadium. Um, and I've heard comments, I've heard comments online about the, the cop not singing. Um, and yeah, it's true. Uh, very little from the cop end today. Uh, Is that where you were sitting, just, sitting? Yeah, yeah, that's where I was in the cop, yeah. Um, and they were only jumping on the tail end of other people's chants. Um, and there was nothing coming from the main stand um, at all. Now, I don't know if that's partly because the quiet the quiet stand is, is there as well. I don't know how much of that is kind of supposed to be the quiet zone. Um, but, yeah, it was all coming from the tech end mainly um, and a little bit from the same stand that the away supporters were in as well. Um, yeah. But I don't know if that's normal or the Yale. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's normal or not. P PG seven, so uh, obviously PG stand. Um, uh, when when the Mould Road stand was um, built, Price Griffiths was the chairman. He, he's the one that when he sold up, obviously Alex Hamilton took the, the club over and the freehold, um, and things went drastically downhill for many years. So um, yeah, so it's called PG one to PG seven. The different blocks of the the Mould Road. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's PG seven, which is nearest the tech end. Um, there's a there's a group I think Tommy Kaus and um, Wayne from the Turf and and a few others um, who who do a bit of singing. You'll see that sometimes or hear that sometimes um, from that end of the ground. And obviously, 
prior to the kickoff. They've they've recently got this massive flag that like crowd surfs. It looks like something in the cop or Old Trafford maybe. Um, what I would say about the the cop at the moment, obviously I grew up when I was thirteen year old on the cop, and he obviously had a tin shed. Um, the sound, the acoustics, the, the noise carried. What you find now is um, a lot of the fans who are in a position where they try and get uh, pay-as-you-go tickets in the cop stand, um, maybe not as regular, so maybe don't know the song, and maybe some newer fans, because um, a lot of the, well, I think there's about five, 6,000 season tickets uh, scattered around the ground, so... Um, typically it will be the upper tier of the tech end that, that does most of the singing. There's a lot of the young lads up there. Um, but rest assured, when that new cop stand's built, um, it's it's going to be, oh, it's going to be a thing of beauty. Yeah, I'm I think really, it's really looking fancy. forward to that. Yeah, I just think nobody's nobody's asserted themselves in there and the unfamiliarity on every any given day as to who's there. So I think that's the reason. I've got Connor, who's been sitting patiently in the wings here. I don't know Connor. When I get a private message that says no drama, it makes makes me assume that he's from from a different club. But let's bring Connor in there. And how are you? And and maybe I should ask instead of your Wrexham jersey, just based on the comment, are you a, a Wrexham fan or a, a, a fan of a different um, club? Yes. Oh, no, okay. no. Go no, ahead and tell was... us uh, tell us your history and, and where you're from and how you became a Wrexham fan and uh, and then your thoughts on the game or otherwise. Well, living hope, dying high girly. So that's that's my uh, position. Um, but obviously when I was 18, I moved to, um, university and then I, I left for 10 years, unfortunately, but, um, I was a huge season ticket, um, holder for the Dennis Smith era, Brian Carey, Brian Little. Good team. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was good. Last so time I, I we saw got promoted. <laughs> yeah. So I, I saw us go from league one to league two and then, uh, you know, the Ryan Valentine penalty to keep us in against Boston and. Um, so then obviously I, I left and moved to the side of the world for a good sort of, you know, 10, 12 years. So I, I came back uh, three, four years and luckily my dad held the, the season ticket. So we're, we're both on, um, we both share it, you know, so he was awesome. there today. He's retiring this year. So I've, uh, there's going to be talks <laughs> in the next couple of days. <laughs> Who's going to be uh, doing each home game, et cetera. So uh, yeah, unfortunately, my dad went today and I watched it from home, uh, very much watching it and, and seeing how it went. And I was very, very impressed. Very. Awesome. And so you've, you've done what you can feel free to talk about. Uh, I'm just your thoughts on either the run in and what's going to happen here and what your predictions are. You can feel free to talk about anything that you saw on the TV that uh, set you afire. Um, just generally I'm curious to know your thoughts. Did, we just got to take each game by game. Don't have to mm. look at any other team now. It's just down to ourselves. And, uh, you know, this game, it shows that we don't need to look at Mansfield, MK, Stockport. We don't need to look at anyone else. We just need to focus on ourselves and stop worrying about everyone else because at the end of the day, we've got a full depth of squad there. Clareworth played some great balls in today. O'Connell, he just... It, the, the way he took the ball and just comes through, you don't see a central defender take that ball through the midfield pretty much through the, the strikers and playing balls in like that. That is brilliant. I thought that was awesome. And, you know, McLean goes tackling like there's no tomorrow. You know, he, he, they're brilliant. And, and, you know, we need to just keep behind the team. And, you know, you have a lot of um, fans that might jump on the bandwagon and just criticise, but you've just got to keep supporting them. Just, just keep supporting them. And that's it. That's all they want. That's all yeah, they I'm want. And, I, I'm, I'm with you 100. percent I'm, I'm going to come back to your thoughts and, and grab those up. Time's winding down. I've got to get back to work. Josh has other things to do, so I'm just going to pass the, the the mic over to him. And Josh, what do you got coming up this week? Uh, we're leading up to Saturday, and then we're going to end up doing some neutral watches together. Uh, why don't you give a plug there for the local pundit? And if you're not watching on a stream, go over to at the local pundit uh, Twitter, YouTube, and hit subscribe and do all that stuff. Josh, fire it up. We're doing the 16th, right? You and I together uh, with the group. Of 16th people. and the 20th, I think, if we can, if 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 it becomes relevant, and maybe we don't do it because we don't care. Let's see. I marked it off on the calendar. So 16th to 20th, uh, Red Horde and anyone uh, that are going to put some things uh, and look at things things together. Uh, yeah, thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Thank you, uh, thank you very much, man. And good to good to catch up with everybody, and good to see some familiar faces and put some names to some faces to the names as well, uh, everyone. So thank you so much. 
Um, yeah, I'll do a Brexit reaction maybe tomorrow if I'm if I'm up for it tonight. I'll do it tonight. But this is an amazing day, and uh, what you're doing, uh, Sean, and the rest of the group, and Dazzle, and uh, Racecourse, and all these guys, and uh, it's good to see you, Sheldon. Uh, absolute legend, Sheldon. Absolute legend today. If you haven't seen what he's done today, go check it out. Uh, yeah. But thank you. Uh, it's good to have this and a good, good, great community. It's everything's growing here uh, across all the communities. So, yeah, uh, thank you, man, for having me on. We'll, we'll Perfect. Check. Thank you soon. All right, brother. Beautiful stuff. I, I, right. I might watch. Yeah, go ahead, Josh. I might watch no, that. Go ahead. I might watch Sheldon's video in the off season, but right now there's too much envy going on, and, and it's just going to end up. <laughs> I'll just stay focused. On, yeah, no, that's a mocking laugh if I've ever heard one. Love it. Yeah. Um, so. Okay, Josh, thank you so much. At the local pundit, YouTube, Twitter, go and hit subscribes and likes and, and uh, you know, keep it going. Um, I much appreciate you, Josh. Show. Oh, and I don't have oh, – oh, I don't have – I'm not Too on slow. my remote. I've got a – I've got Too a, slow. Uh, there. <laughs> <laughs> I usually have two screens going, and I'm able to monitor one with the chat and one with the control of the cameras. And today, for whatever reason, one of them doesn't want to work, so I'm doing it all slowly through the laptop there josh thanks so much for everything okay we'll come back to connor and then we'll come back to Irwin. i've got to wind things down a little bit um so i won't do a shout out for anybody that wants to jump back in um we'll probably just wrap it up with here and i do want to get the wrap up from sheldon as to his whole take on the day that was or the days that have been um while he's been over there so let's start with uh erwin as far as your goodbyes final thoughts and final shot shout outs from you and and uh your take on the next three games for us, five? For yeah, three, um, I think as everybody game. else said, we have to just take it game by game, see what happens. Um, I think by this weekend, we might have an answer already, whether we are going up or not. But obviously, we just got to see, do our best, win games. And uh, hopefully, we can still um, either get the championship, but at least go up. That's it's, all I'm it's, hoping it's for. Great it's a great time i mean we i feel like we've robbed people joining in here at, in the 11th hour um uh you know t two years three years ago for for many of us that we're getting so much glory for some of the people that have been having to toil through as connor was talking about some of the the darker days um but it's an it's an amazing time to be a fan of the club and long may it continue and uh appreciate you erwin for a joining us and 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 b for following along with everything at wrexham and the social media stuff it's uh, awesome to have you and so credit to you um, thanks, Erwin. And we'll Hi. give him the bump. And I've got Baz back. So before we go to Connor, I'll just add Baz, who had must have a connection Hi. issue. Connor, I, I, a question for you. What are your thoughts on, I mean, 2.5 million quid is what internationals have brought to the, to the club, um, separate and apart from Ryan and Rob's ownership, but joining onto a chat where you've got people from around the globe here with just a couple of Rexamites. What's your take on that, uh, being a local guy who's now been sort of displaced and moved somewhere else in the country? Well, no, no, I've, I've been back now uh, three years. Oh, three years, I, okay. Yeah, yeah. I think I come back when <laughs> Rob and Ryan took over. It was just good before timing. when, when you had, you know, uh, Rutherford and, you know, et cetera, that were playing and uh, my dad was sort of saying, you know, we'll take you back to the game. I said, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I'm still getting 100% on board with these guys. And then um, I came just before they took over. So I was still always, Rex my heart, Rex them, you know, even if you're on the other side of the world. So... And then I think the next season, Rob and Ryan took over. Um, but obviously, when I was living in New Zealand, Australia at that time, I was still following them. But I was like, God, this place is going nowhere. You know, it, it, it was a tough time. But, you know, I was, I was there at the tough times when we, we went down to the... Before and all the way down, yeah. Yeah. So, so um, having, having us as the mob coming and joining, joining on a chat here where, I mean, we were mostly populated internationally, I think, for, because of the nature of the home game. What's, what's your take on that? Um, frustrating, welcome, a, a blessing, a curse. Uh, I, I absolutely love it. I yeah. absolutely love it. And, you know, sometimes I, I like to see the take on uh, Americans, Canadians, anyone that, 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 that sees us play well. You know, it only does well for the, for the town. I call it a town. It still is. It's a city, but it's a town. You know, it's a community. Um, I think it's great. You know, I think the more that people jump on it, you know, the more that people, I mean, I live in a village called Hope. You know, my dad the other day saw seven people from Texas go and see Kai Gurley Castle, you know, <laughs> it, and it just bumped into him. You know, it, it's great. It's good for the, the country. And, you know, and now a lot of people in America know where Wales is, what mm -hmm. it is, and it is a country, you know. So it, it, it's, there's nothing but good things. I can't say anything better. I'm I'm with you on that one. Um, I appreciate you joining and signing up and having your two cents here. I'm going to just, because I've got to go and do a couple of final no work problem. things here. 
Um, so I'm going to give you the boot and say thanks for everything. And you're the awesome. Boot? And hope to see you around the boot. I had to put it on with a Canadian accent. Um, and then we'll do, we'll do Baz and, and get his sense, two cents here in the bump. And then we'll talk to Sheldon to wrap up with uh, the whole experience of what was over there. Thanks, Connor. Hi, can you hear me? I can hear you, Baz. So, um, yeah. just can, can you wrap see me? Because on, on, on my mobile, the screen's blacked out for some reason. Yeah, no, you're you're perfectly centered. And in fact, I thought maybe you might be frozen because you haven't even moved at all. You've been ah. stoic for <laughs> forever. I thought you well, were frozen. I, I, when it all went about Pete Tong was I, I came downstairs because on my wall in my living room here, there, there's a, a limited edition print which has got Ryan Valentine's goal that Connor referred to earlier from ah. the the Boston game, and, and on the print, it's got <laughs> the scoreline of Wrexham 0, Bolton 1. Now, that was a game that we needed to draw to stay in the Football League, uh, or was it, I think it might have been when we were in League 1. Um, yeah, it was. And uh, anyway, half-time, you know, crying into my beer. Um, and, and Ryan Valentine got a penalty in the, the second half. He scored, then Chris Llewellyn scored, and... and took his shirt off, threw it in the Mold Road stand, got a yellow card, and I think there was another goal as well. I think we won 3-1. But, uh, yeah, I love that picture, you know what I mean? So, when as soon as he mentioned that, I thought, come bring it down. I don't know why my screen's blacked out. So, uh, yeah, just shameless plug then. So, um, obviously, please, if you haven't already, we've put a 24-minute video out uh, 3 o'clock this morning. I think it went live. So, uh, I didn't get much sleep last night. Straight after this, I'm going straight to bed to catch up. But, um, it's got all Paul Mullins' 100 goals. Um, we're going to keep doing the, the pre-match previews, um, joining the, the, the post-90 minute chats. Um, one thing I would say is that um, I've, I've got membership envy, Sean. I, I, I want to give a big shout out to John, um, who's Dazzle Publishing, um, our channel watching Wrexham FC, putting on a show. If anyone's listening in that hasn't already tuned in and seen some of our videos, we've got about 125 videos, match day vlogs, um, interviews with players, ex-managers, things like that. And we've got loads of stuff planned over the summer during the quiet season. So if you haven't already, jump in. Make sure you hit the subscribe button just purely because you, you don't want to miss anything. Um, we're aiming to get to 1,000 uh, subscribers. And um, it was indeed, Hugh, it was April 2007. Uh, no, it wasn't. No, you're lying to me, Hugh. Hugh, it was actually the 5th of May 2007, and it was 3-1. <laughs> you're right. Um, but, yeah, please subscribe. And uh, we've also now, I say, because we've punched through the 500 uh, barrier with our subscribers, we want to reach 1,000, really. Um, a lot of work, time, effort, and I've got a great editor now who's putting some great content together with the stuff I'm filming. Um and, and we do it because we want to entertain you guys that can't get to the race course, can't get to Wrexham. I've uh, got loads of great ideas what we're going to do over the summer, so please make sure you subscribe. And if you want to give us a super thanks, uh, show your appreciation. Uh, there's different levels and also memberships. So I'm going to give a big shout out to John, who's our first ever member. Um, thanks so much, John. Um, he, he was giving me, um, telling me that I needed to um, give you a bit of grief about your, your singing earlier, but I, I felt that would have been a bit disingenuous after you're hosting such a great show tonight. I didn't yeah, want to bring it down. It. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, no, so that's Marie Kellen, thanks, thanks for below. subscribing. Look at that, as live as you like. Yeah, d down below on my uh, blah, 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 on my description, um, if you need to bounce over there, I've got the link to him. You can find him on the internet or on the internet, on Twitter as well. Uh, so Daz, uh, Baz, much appreciation, much love, and we'll catch you. And then I'm going to wrap things up with Sheldon as the camera shows off. The Boston United uh, three-one win, awesome. Me, two thousand seven. If I got that right, Sheldon. Yo, sir. Um, you've probably got stories, um, and I don't want to rush you. You're probably going to save some of those for the local pundit, and I think you probably should because I'm sure there's a lot to go in there. But uh, why not throw us a couple bones here as to how that was as an experience and whatever you wanted to add? Um, I've had a great time. Um... It, it is obviously a little tight um, flying over and flying back so quickly. It's a long journey getting up here. Um, didn't get in till 4 a.m. local time, which felt like 6 a.m. to me. Um, and then up today, out to the match and home tomorrow. Um, but it, it's it's been great. Um, seeing everything from the cop. Uh, I'm going to switch the light on because somebody switched it up. <laughs> Uh, seeing everything from the cop was really interesting because it is a different feeling from watching on TV. 
Um, I was a lot less concerned with the amount of possession um, that, that Crawley had than Josh and the guys were um, doing the watch along. Um, because obviously I was listening to them at the same time in my ear. Um, yes, we allowed them the, the possession. Uh, and I've been harsh on this in other matches before our style. Um, but today it did seem less, less worrisome. Now, the same old thing is always true. If they scored first, it could have been a completely different match um, and a different situation. Um, but I was very surprised the noise wasn't, wasn't much, much louder um, from the race course. Interesting. Like, we we discussed it just briefly. Yeah, and, and was that just a cop end because you were there? Because Stacey said that was one of the loudest that she's ever heard um, <clears throat> earlier in the show. So I'm, maybe expectations didn't just um, weren't met or whether it was, was it potentially because you were sitting, do you think? It's hard to know, obviously, um, considering it's the first time at the race course. There, there was singing, but it was coming mainly from one end. Um, but it wasn't maybe as consistent as I had expected it to be. Um, stuff like that, because interestingly, I did go to the Stockport match. Um, and obviously, when you only have a small number of away fans, mm -hmm. uh, and they're all kind of extreme fans, for want of a better word, sure. they know all the songs and they sing all the time, trying trying to get everything working. Uh, and considering we lost that match 5-0, um, you know, it was just a completely different take on things. Now, you can say as well, the boys didn't need it. They were comfortably winning. It wasn't a difficult match, and maybe it would be different if we were scra uh, scraping at a 1-1 one -one win, a 1-1 one -one draw, sorry, trying to get the win. Maybe then you might need the crowd a bit more. So, yeah, it just surprised me a little bit. Yep. No, good stuff, and then you got to have your fair shake of chatting to a whole bunch of people. I'm looking forward to hearing that, and I probably will end up watching. So I, I don't want to take away the steam from the local pundit because I assume you're probably putting some stuff together. Uh, it, it's already live. I, I did it. I did the whole thing live. Oh, you did it all live, so it's all out Before there. Them all. So there you go. There's yeah. the bump. If you want more, we got yeah. 286. It was as high as we were over 300 today as far as concurrent viewers. So if you're sitting here still watching this, and when we go offline here, the next move, move over to the local pundit. Um, well, first go to Racecourse Ramble, give it a bump. Welsh Beast, give it a bump. Two Beards Wrexham, mm -hmm. um, Dazzle Publishing. Hit those guys up, subscribe. And on the way, end up at the local pundit, and Sheldon's going to have his take on what was going on. Yeah, I'm going to so have to end up watching that. So we did, basically did a pre-match um, event. Uh, I just went live because I have keys to his show. Sure. Um, so I just switched it on and he jumped on then shortly afterwards to join me. Um, and basically we did about an hour maybe, something like that. Um, and as the players were coming through, I was taking shots, uh, doing the video, uh, talking to some of them, um, which was interesting. Um, and, and that was good fun, you know, completely different than the usual, obviously. Um, and I was trying to jump in where I could uh, during the live as well, the live stream. Um, uh, but that was a little bit difficult because the internet was a bit shaky. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, one thing I, I don't know if you mentioned uh, at all today was Okonko. Um, I was with Mad Al and Mad Al uh, said, sorry, one second. Yeah. I was just, <laughs> sorry. Um, so he, he pointed out that Madal, uh, sorry, Madal pointed out that Okonkwo was not kicking the ball. Um, and as soon as he pointed it out to me, I started paying attention to it and paying attention to Okonkwo, the way he's walking and everything. And I believe he only kicked the ball twice in the entire match. Entire match. Hmm. Um, so it, it does look like he's favoring um one of his legs he may have tweaked the hamstring um and i i think he is playing through injury at the moment In interesting um, yeah okay well we're gonna now we're gonna watch we watch the highlights and see how that all boiled down um i've got to wrap things up an hour and a half that's a long for yeah. as long as i can have for it so sheldon thanks for that and i'm gonna end up um giving you the bump and then i'll just close off for the day um i did see the comment about the the, the whether the fourth wall um, was going to come down um, I don't think it's been um, uh, particularized as of yet, but there's been discussions that there's going to be a 12-month a time limit on that. And, and, and I mean, the reality is, is we want to build the cop up. So it coming down, uh, it'll probably stay up for as long as it can until it's time to come down because they've got the money in, 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 and can start the construction. Um, 
at the end of the day, that was a an amazing performance. Four exceptional goals, uh, lots of hunger, lots of fight, and just natural flowing stuff. I appreciate everything that uh, has happened in the after ninety minutes. Uh, the people that joined us for the first time, um, the people who are normally here, Dazzle Publishing, the local pundit. Uh, Carl wasn't here from the Welsh Beast, but he's there frequently. The Two Beards there in Australia, they've got a different time zone. It's late for them for this one. And Matt, uh, who probably enjoyed that at the race course or, uh, itself. So much love and appreciation for the, the community getting together and having its chat and doing its thing. It's uh, it's why we do it. Go around to the, the cycle, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on the content that's being created. And we will be here. Uh, local Pundit will have their watch party on Saturday. I will have a watch party on Saturday or watch along, however you want to call it. Um, different interests, different way of covering it. Pick your poison. Uh, we all are having fun doing it, and uh, we're glad that you guys are along for the journey. And more importantly, for the journey that is Rexham AFC as we are that close, that close to securing uh, an automatic promotion spot. And then we'll just let the season be what the season will be. And we'll look forward to league one. Hopefully that's the case. And we can talk about it on Saturday. Um, we'll be around have a good one. And, uh, thanks for being a part of it. Take care, everybody.